Um, I love my wife, Jen, for lots and lots of reasons. But one of the reasons uh, right at the top is that she is so good at making life-giving choices. She just loves having you know, fun, she's up for adventures, but also things like she'll she'll exercise every single day and not little little workouts either. She does real hardcore workouts that I couldn't do. She doesn't do that because she um, particularly wants to. She's constant she just makes these really good choices and then reaps the rewards. Feels fantastic. And uh, you know, during lockdown time she would um, you know, say, come on, boys, and they'll go on these biking adventures, and she'll be running, and then they'll come back all exhausted and, and jump into the freezing cold pool. It's 12 degrees, and I think at its coldest, and uh, shriek and laugh, and then they'll be on the trampoline, and I'll be watching, just going, man, that just Jen's so good at choosing life. And I'm far more like Bernard Black from Black Books. I'm like, ah, I just want to mooch around. And, uh, and that's probably why God and his wisdom paired me up with Jen. Uh, you know, I don't have any tattoos, but if I was to get a tattoo, um, it probably at this stage, it would be, uh, I'd probably have something that said, choose life. And I'd write it on my hand or something. Uh, and again, not to, I want to tell the world this. I'd be, well, of course I want that, but mainly for myself, I'm like, I want the reminder that like when there's options about what to do, choose that life-giving choice. Now, I, I think God's wanting to bring us to life in a new way in this time. Throughout all the challenges of this year and throughout all the challenges of this COVID thing and the lockdown thing, I think God wants to bring us to life. Of course he does. He's always wanting to bring his people to life. He's always wanting to lead his people into life. I've been doing a little bit of a word study on this uh, this week, and it's and there's hundreds of passages that speak to God's desire to bring his people to life. It begins in Genesis, the very start of the Bible, 2 verse 7, it says that the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. It's like a hongi of life that he gave that first man, and they became and that man became a living being. Uh, and the Psalms, the worship is uh, filled with declarations like Psalm 36 verse 9, for with you is the fountain of life. It's like it, it bursts forth from God. And the New Testament, it's interesting, particularly John's gospel, is such a strong theme of the life found in Jesus. Now, for example, in Matthew 5, uh, 5, uh, 5 verse 39 to 40, Jesus says to the Pharisees, so you're studying the scriptures really diligently because you think in them you have eternal life. Yet these are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Really challenging moments saying, hey, like you guys are fully into all of your scriptures and debating scriptures and stuff. And yet these are the, the Bible points to Jesus and, uh, and Jesus is where we find life. I love the Bible with everything I have. I read it every day, Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, you know, I've spent uh, three years academically studying the Bible. I mean, I've, I'm devoted uh, to, to studying the Bible, but I, I, you know, I've, I've seen the dangers and just getting all caught up in the scriptures and losing Jesus. And it's in Jesus that we find life. Uh, Jesus in uh, John 6 verse 35 declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus makes this bold declaration that uh, he satisfies the desires of our soul. He satisfies the longings of our heart and no other way can, can satisfy like him. You know, the, it's interesting, the secular dream in our culture is a dream of trying to have life without Jesus. That's the secular dream, to somehow have peace and joy and life and, and love without Jesus on the throne. And um, it just, it, it doesn't satisfy. The broken marriages all over the place, a testament that it doesn't satisfy. The, the depression and the anxiety uh, is, is evidence it doesn't satisfy. I'm not saying that Christians don't struggle with those things. But when we choose Jesus and we choose to be close to him, he satisfies us. It's interesting in Ephesians, it, and we were studying this last year as a church, and it, you know, the opening of Ephesians says, you know, we used to be dead in our sins and our transgressions. It's like, literally it's saying we used to be like zombies, alive but dead. And, uh, and so often I, I look around and I'm like, man, it feels like we've got a world full of zombies going through all the motions. And yet when you connect with Jesus and believe in him and put your hope in him and your faith in him and develop a relationship with him, you start coming to life. You know, a little twinkle in your eye. 
and uh, he leads us to life. Uh, John 10 verse 10, uh, Jesus says, The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full or have it abundantly. Uh, man, I've taken too many uh, funerals from people that have taken their lives. And uh, I've got friends that have attempted to take their lives, but thankfully survived. And when you talk to those that survived and ask them what they were experiencing, what they were thinking before they made that decision, there's no doubt in my mind that there is a there is a thief, a foul thief out there whispering lies into people's ears about who they are and what their worth is. I, I believe that there is a thief out there who's, who's trying to kill and steal and destroy. Jesus said that it, there's a wide path that leads to destruction. Like it's easy to slide down that path. Uh, some of you guys have got testimonies that, that where you flirted with those parts, paths of destruction. You know what I'm talking about, how, how slippery and how easy it is to go. Then you've got this, this thief trying to lead you there. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Later, Jesus says this incredible statement. He says, I am the life. Jesus saying like life is found in a person and his name is Jesus. There is life found in Jesus. One of um, the most interesting passages that I've, I've thought about a lot, which is why I'm, <laughs> I've thought about that tattoo about choosing life, is this passage in Deuteronomy, going back to the Old Testament, uh, chapter 30, verses 19 to 20. And God stands before the Israelites and says, This day I call the heavens and earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and, and death, blessings and curses. So set, I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. This is God's heart. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God and listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. This is so interesting because um, it's really important that we understand that God will not violate our free will. He will not. Uh, he, he will not cross that line. He, but he will stand there saying, "Choose life. Choose life with longing in his voice." He's like, "I want you to choose life. To choose the way of life." And uh, it's, isn't it interesting? You know, I'm sure you resonate with this. Like when you you've got that choice about the the, the life giving choice and the, and the choice that's just that goes with the flow, often with how we're feeling, right? And, uh, and how it's like, there's that thing of, it is a choice. Uh, you know, on, with devotional exercises, it's a choice. I've got my little devotional things here. My little Bible in a year that I read um, every day. And, there's, and it's not like every day, um, well, I don't think any day where I'm like, ooh, oh, some, maybe sometimes these days. But certainly for the first number of years, I was trying to get that discipline in my life. It wasn't like, I can't wait to read the Bible today. You know, that wears off real quick after, you know, maybe you get a motivational sermon and you're like, oh, I'm going to read the Bible. And you're so excited for the first couple of days. I'm reading the Bible again. It's great. I don't know. It's going to wear off real quick. Then it becomes this choice. Will I choose life? And and it's like, you you know, the Bible, it's like, it's like the toughest book to open sometimes. It's like, oh, I'm going to push it. <laughs> <laughs> and we finally open, then we engage with the word of God, and it's just, and, and we, after we finish, oh man, it was a life giving choice to a, um, a lesser extent, but still true. It's like for me to go for a run, or even someone to go for a surf, it's like, oh, I just, I just want to mooch around, I want to be burning black, I just want to, and it's like this this battle, and it's, and then it's like, if you choose life, the way of life, and it's a choice, uh, there's res res often resistance from the flesh, but then you crack through there and very quickly there's grace and there's joy and there's sometimes peace and there's life found in those choices. And so let me unpack the, the, the three areas that I think God wants to bring us to life in this season. Concentric circles out. Let's begin with us. God wants to bring you to life. He wants to bring me to life. He wants to bring us to life. How can we grow in, uh, in, in this life abundant for us? Well, it's by being a disciple of Jesus. It's by following him. 
and we've defined disciple by stealing another church's definition. Uh, and our definition is a, a disciple is someone that is learning to be with Jesus, become like Jesus and do what Jesus did. Please memorize that if you call this church home, because that's what we're after. That's our definition of a disciple, to be with, become like, and do what he did. I'll say it again. Let's say it all together. One, two, three. Be with, become like, and do what he did. That's what we're after. No one actually did that then, did they? <laughs> uh, but but this, is, this is how we find life, by being the disciple, a follower of the one who is the life. So let's learn, let's learn and cultivate a life filled with being with God. It, it all flows from here. You can't shortcut or skip this step. This is where life begins. John 15 is where Jesus says, if you want to, to have this life of love, joy and peace, you need to abide or remain in me, connected to me. And so uh, let's continue. I, I want to do this almost every week, but it's because it's, it's a real battle in our, in our lives right now, right? Around the world. There's, this is where the battle is on for our devotional life with Jesus. That's why I'd love you to do this course, Dallas, the Dallas Willow one. But let's, be, let's learn to be with Jesus. And so once more I get my pom-poms out, do, go for it. Read your Bible. Have quiet times. Go somewhere silent. Sit with him. Pray. Listen to his voice. Let's develop a life that uh, where the priority is to be with him, to become like him, that flows from being with him, uh, to become like him is this intentionality to cultivate character, fruit of the spirit, love and joy and peace to just allow that to flourish in our lives. It's to apply the Sermon of the Mount to our lives. It's to, uh, to um, work on uh, our anxiety and our stress and to move from being an anxious and stressed uh, presence to a presence filled, a non-anxious presence, a presence of peace. To work through the unnecessary worry that we often have. Not saying that we, you know, this is a journey and it's not to say that all worry is bad, but the unnecessary worry that we carry. And to become more like Jesus who uh, lived at a beautiful pace and who... Uh, who just loved nature and he loved good food and a good wine and good company and just had a lovely uh, way about his lifestyle. And lastly, to do what he did, to pray for folks and encourage people and minister and to live a life that's not about just doing our own thing, but to live a life that's there to bless others. This is the abundant life that Jesus invites us into. This is, this is what satisfies when we choose to follow the one who called himself the life and imitate him and learn from him. And what's beautiful is that he gives us his, God gives us the Holy Spirit to walk into this life. And we're going to talk about that next week as we celebrate, celebrate Pentecost Sunday. That the Holy Spirit is the spirit of life and he leads us into all life if we would just constantly be asking holy spirit fill me and even now i pray that in wherever you are watching this that the holy spirit will just fill you with a new sense of of uh, energy to choose life to choose the way of jesus it's a choice but then you crack through and we walk into something more beautiful so god wants to bring you to life the second point that I want to make is that God wants to bring his church to life as we move out in these concentric circles. God wants to bring his church to life. I'm utterly convinced that this COVID lockdown thing is a gift from God to help form the church so that it will walk into greater life. It's a gift from God. It's not something that we want to quickly uh, jump out of. We, there's something that God wants to form in us at this time that is uh, very exciting. Uh, I, I unpacked this midweek. If you haven't watched my little video from midweek, can you please do that? Uh, I'll be just, I'd love you to do that because I just, I, I, I think God wants to do something around moving us from consumption to devotion. Uh, from consuming to church where we go to church on a Sunday morning in the hall to devotion to the teaching to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer because we don't go to church we are the church that's what God wants to do in us it's interesting is that um, there was a shift that happened in the in the church where uh, in the early church and uh, you'll read in the epistles where they moved from having high priests and all this sort of thing in the Old Testament to Jesus being our great high priest. And now uh, what we call a priesthood of all believers. 
um, uh, in Revelation 5 verse 10, it says, You have made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. The, the, the church is called to be a priesthood of all believers. Everyone gets to play. And so I think God wants to restore a fresh confidence and also a fresh ownership for what it means for us to be the church. I have my role in terms of teaching and pastoring and leading, uh, but all of us are called to own the church. We are called to own it. And in this season, we're called to, to rediscover what it means to be a priest, where we take ownership for the fellowship and for the, te- uh, for the, uh, the teaching, We've being committed to things like the teaching and uh, the breaking of bread. And, and for those of you that have gathered this morning, as you took communion, it's, a diff- it's meant to be done together. It's a very different experience. Even as we engage with sung worship, it's, it's meant to be together, not just on our own. And so... God's wanting to bring uh, us to life. Now is the time for us to take ownership, to, to, to reclaim the calling of God for us to be the church and, uh, and for us to take seriously the mandate that that church happens in your home. It happens in your home. Uh, that, that we're going to uh, take ownership. You know, things like, it's interesting, one of the gifts in this season that I think is a new maturity he wants to give us, particularly for parents, and <coughs> uh, the discipleship of our children. Uh, I want to choose life for my children, and so I can't just rely on Charlotte doing that on Sunday morning in a hall anymore. I have to take ownership. I'm, gonna, I'm grateful for the resources that she's putting together, but I've felt this thing of like, we... It's time we take a lot more ownership for the discipleship of our children. Again, we're choosing life for them. All right, kids, let's sit down. We're going to watch this, the video. We're going to do the activities. We're going to talk about what it means to follow Jesus. This is so exciting. I think God wants to invite us. He's standing before us and saying, choose life. Choose life. Choose life for your children. Choose life for your neighbors. Choose life for your church. It's not just about consuming. It's about this new devotion. A devotion is an interesting word. You know, we're devoted to lots of things. Devoting to, we're devoted to careers, devoted to hobbies. Uh, a lot of our boys are really devoted to surfing, devoted to fishing, devoted to different dreams that we may have. And uh, the Lord's, I think, by His Holy Spirit, is when I say there's a fresh devotion that I want to give my church to the basics, to the absolute elements. I don't believe we're going to see a move of God in this nation unless we come back to the basics. They aren't sexy. It's just really normal, ordinary, 101 church stuff. We meet in homes. We break bread together. We pray for one another. We minister together. And also, I'm going to talk about this in a second, we we think about how can we be a blessing to the world around us. Uh, I I finished with this. uh, As I was doing this word study in Ezra, um, I came across this passage, and, and this is where a church is, you know, the church at that point um, was just in ruins. They'd been taken into exile. And Ezra, uh, he writes this in nine, chapter 9, verse 9, Though we are slaves, our God has not forsaken us in our bondage. He has shown us kindness in the sight of the kings of Persia. Listen to this. He has granted us new life to rebuild the house of our God and repair its ruins. And he has given us a wall of protection, protection in Judah and Jerusalem. I believe that. I, I read that and it leapt at me and I thought, man, he's granted us new life to rebuild the house of our God and repair its ruins. The church has not been in a healthy state for a long time in New Zealand. And uh, and so the Lord wants to lead us into a place where we rebuild the house of God and repair its ruins. And, and that means in real terms that we're, we have a fresh devotion to being the church and for that to begin in our homes for that to begin in our homes. And so will you choose life for the church in this time? Will you choose to crack through uh, that that resistance that we may have and and step into the new life that will reinvigorate the church? And I I believe we'll see a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit and a fresh dynamism and power and life restored to the church as we cease from it being something run by professionals to the, and we restore the church to a place where ordinary people take ownership and are devoted to opening up their homes, welcoming people in, loving people, breaking bread together, praying for one another. Whoa, imagine what God can do.
let's let's uh, let's just work together Lord let it be Lord let it be and lastly so we've got God wants to bring life to you he wants to bring life to his church and lastly he wants to bring life to the world he wants to bring life to the world again this theme just flows through the scriptures he wants to restore and renew all things it's really interesting and uh, Acts as the church uh, starts um, uh, in Acts 5 verse 20 it says go stand in the temple courts he said and tell the people about this new life so like, this is the, the message there is a new life and it's found in Jesus um, the kingdom of God is God's life flowing into the world and, and pushing back the darkness and pushing back the pain as God flows through the world normally through his people and just brings hope and brings healing. God is wanting to do something in this place. He wants to, uh, to bring life through us. And he wants to fill us with a great passion for the things like the environment, for the poor, for those who are lost and hurting and broken in the bay. Uh, Aaron Greaves, uh, you would have seen this if you're on our Facebook page, but Aaron Greaves a little while back posted about this amazing guy called Owen who serves a whole lot of uh, the street he's up in Auckland a really amazing guy it turns out really selfless and so he said you know uh, he was in need at that time financially and posted some stuff on our page and and so once everyone sort of had told me yeah this is legitimate because you know obviously there's a few few con artists out there um, he uh, so we, I connected um, uh, I sent that post and a few details on to our friends up in Auckland uh, to the, our, ch our church up there Central Vineyard and uh, they jumped uh, on board and connected with Owen and um, it was incredible to see the partnership that's formed since uh, Aaron Greaves posted that, that little uh, shout out on our Facebook page. A whole ministry has formed with uh, folks in, uh, in Auckland caring for the streeties. And uh, Robert Wiseman, who's one of the pastors at Central Vineyard, just recently posted um, about the way his heart's been really stirred and broken as he's made friends with a bunch of these guys and as they're working with Owen and uh, Robert Wiseman uh, put out this call uh, to say hey can people donate money so that we can give new uh, as winter approaches you know new hoodies and new shoes and new socks and gloves to the streeties and he says I don't want people to donate things because I want I want us to give new gear to the streeties because new gear says that you are you are valued and you are loved oh so epic so epic you are worth it and you are loved and so that's like that's what it's all about the scene God's life begin to move and spread out all around the world but it begin, like has to begin with you coming to life and having that rich life in him and being committed to the church flourishing, not being a spectator, but being a contributor. And lastly, when that gets healthy, things begin to happen where the kingdom of God advances as the body of Christ moves forward. I read this in a book called The End of Religion by Bruxy Cavey. Uh, he said this, I once saw someone holding a sign that said, repent for the kingdom, for the end is near. He got it wrong. Jesus didn't say the end was near. He said that the kingdom of God was near. If I repent because the end is near, then I'm just apologizing for my past and in time to die and go to heaven. But if I repent because the kingdom, the way, the rule of God is near, then I'm actively deciding to change my egocentric approach to life and joining in partnership with God to help bring about his way of love in this world. I repent, not because the end is near, but because the beginning is here and I want to be a part of it. What an awesome, awesome line. God wants to use us as a church, a bunch of Jesus following Holy Spirit filled folks who are coming to life in him, he's wanting to use us to bring his life into our families and into our workplaces and into this beautiful region. And uh, and so it's interesting, God continues just to stand before us and say, I, I stand before you and say, you can choose, you can choose, it's up to you. And I've just felt such a stirring in my heart at this time to say, it's this is the time now that we say we're going to choose life. We're going to choose life. God, we want to choose your life. 
And, uh, and I pray in this moment that if you're with me, that even right now you'd say, I'm choosing, I want to choose life. I want to choose it for myself. I want to see it in the church because I am the church and I want to see it flow into the world. And so, Lord, help me have eyes to see where the life is that I could bless it. God invites us into this deeper, this richer, this more flourishing, more fulfilling life. And he's, he's constantly, and it's often in these difficult, challenging times that, that, that he's doing his greatest work. And I believe that in this moment, it's, it, he's doing a great work in, in hearts. Man, he's done a work in my heart. Oh, it's been painful, but so good. He's bringing me to life. He's doing a work in our church. Oh, I'm so stirred up. I don't want us to miss out. I really don't want us to miss out. I have this vision of home churches all around the bay flourishing at this time. But that can't happen because of a sermon that happens by his spirit. I can just point to it and say, I think God's doing this. And But, but right now, God's stands before all of us saying will you choose life will you choose life will you choose to see our, this church come to life more and more and I, and God aches and his heart breaks for the bay and he wants to see the life of God just come and bring healing and hope but it starts with the first two and flows into the third it, it, we can't start at that last one it actually starts from our own devotional life and it flows into our church and it flows from the church into the world so i'm i, I just think where we focus right now is uh, and it is, is let's just focus on the life that god wants to bring us our church and then let's see that bubble over into the world around us so uh, what i'd love us to do as we finish uh, today is to pray for one another and uh I'm not going to force you to do anything. I can't. But if um, if there's a um, if there's some needs in the room, let's let's encourage one another. This is what the church does. I think this again. This is one of the, the things of life he wants to bring us into is a fresh confidence to minister to one another and encourage one another. And so, what I would love to ask you is that if if you feel like you've been struggling to choose life, if you're feeling a bit discouraged, then let's just pray for you. And, um, and either make that known or if, you've, if there's some courageous Christians in the room, why don't you ask the, the, your person sitting next to you or ask people in the lounge and say, hey, is anyone here that would like prayer? And before we rush off and do other things, let's pray for one another and encourage one another. And uh, if there's no needs in the um, room for people, then let's pray for the church. Let's pray that God would do something new at this time and we'll capture a vision for what church is meant to be. And let's pray for the bay that God would give new life into the uh, into this region and that we'd see the church rise up and be a great blessing and that many people would find healing and hope as the body of Christ uh, just represents him and, and, uh, and, and acts his hands and feet uh, like his hands and feet in this place. So let's but I'm just gonna um, we'll put on some gentle background music and if you would just like to pray for one another, I would encourage you to do that. Let me just close in prayer, then I'll hand over to you guys and, uh, and let's see what God wants to do. Father, I thank you for these, this awesome crew that calls this church home. Love them, proud of them, and very excited about what you want to do at this time. So Lord, right now we just open our hearts and say, fill us with your spirit, the spirit of life. Fill us with new life. Fill us with revelation even now about what that life looks like really practically. Lord, we don't want to just have an idea and that's it. We want, to, we want to apply the word to our lives. What can we do? What changes can we make that would see us choose life, choose blessing, choose the love of God, choose generations after generations of blessing, as it says in that promise in Deuteronomy. Lord, we want that. Lord, for our church, we want to really capture the hardcore essence, the beautiful essence of what church is about. We said in that early church after the Holy Spirit was poured out, just this devotion to these things that make up the real heart of what church is about. Lord, would you do that in me? Would you do that in us? Would you just give us a commitment to meet in homes and to be the church at this time and to recapture a fresh confidence and a fresh authority that you want to give us to minister to one another and to encourage one another? And Father, we just thank you for this region. Pour out your spirit. Lord, pour out your spirit and bring life. Give us opportunities to help those that are hurting. Give us opportunities to care for those that are broken. And Lord Jesus, may we see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven.